Clarence Larkin, Chapter 33 Scripture Numerics Every careful reader of the Holy Scriptures has had his attention called to the frequent use of certain numbers as 4, 7, 10, 12, 40 and 70. These numbers occur with more or less frequency in both the Old and New Testament and indicate that the Scriptures have a numerical structure that is based on the symbolic significance of these numbers. God has been called the Great Geometrician and is said to do everything after a plan and by number, weight and measure. If God is the author of the scriptures and the creator of the world, then the word of God and the works of God should harmonize. The scriptures reveal a time system known as the weeks of scripture. They are seven in number. The week of days. The week of weeks. The week of months. The week of years. The week of weeks of years. The week of millenniums. The week of ages. See the chart on the weeks of scripture. Now this scale of weeks is common in nature. The hen sits three weeks, the pigeon two, after having laid eggs for two weeks. The ova of salmon is hatched in twenty weeks. Of 129 species of mammalia the majority have a period from conception to birth of an exact number of weeks. The same is true of the human race. Fevers and intermittent attacks of gout, ague and similar complaints have a septiform periodicity, and the 7th, 14th and 21st days in certain diseases are known as critical days. Then there are seven notes in the musical scale, seven colors in the rainbow, seven rays in prismatic light, and the leaves of plants are largely governed in their forms by the same law of sevens. This agreement of nature with the scriptures cannot be a mere coincidence. It reveals the fact that they are both built on a divine plan. 1. The number of unity. It symbolizes the unity of God. Mark 12 verse 32. John 10 verse 30. In Ephesians 4 verses 4 to 6 we have seven distinct unities, one body, one spirit. One hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God. 2. The number of union. The union of marriage, and they shall be one flesh. Genesis 2 verses 23 and 24. The union of Christ and the church. Ephesians 5 verses 31 and 32. The union of the two natures in Jesus. Luke 1 verse 35. The union of death and life and the atonement of Christ, as seen in the two birds, Leviticus 14 verses 4 to 7, and the two goats. Leviticus 16 verses 5 to 22. The disciples were named in pairs, Matt 10 colon 2-4, and were sent out two by two. Mark 6 verse 7. There were two tables of testimony, and two witnesses were necessary to a fair trial, and two witnesses will testify during the tribulation. Revelation 11 verse 3. 3. The number of divinity. It is called the divine number because it is mentioned so often in connection with holy things. It speaks of the Trinity of God Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and the Trinity of Man Body, Soul, and Spirit, of the three great feasts, the Passover, Pentecost and Tabernacles, the threefold character of the baptismal formula, Matt 28 of the Apostolic Benediction, 2 Corinthians 13 verse 14, the three temptations of Christ, and his three prayers in Gethsemane, the three denials of Peter and the Lord's threefold question and charge, and the threefold vision of the sheet. The number 3 is also associated with the restoration of Israel, Hosea 6 verses 1 and 2, the resurrection of Jonah, and the resurrection of Christ. Matt 12 38-40 The number 3 is very prominent in the threefold descriptions in the book of Revelation. Jesus Christ is spoken of as he which is and was and is to come, as the faithful witness, the first begotten from the dead, and the Prince of the Kings of the Earth. The four living creatures chant holy, holy, holy unto the Almighty, and give him glory, and honor, and thanks. The book is divided into three parts. There are three woe trumpets, and three frog-like spirits issue from the mouth of the dragon, the mouth of the beast, and the mouth of the false prophet. Revelation 16 verses 13 and 14. 
Three plagues are to come upon Babylon, death, mourning and famine, Revelation 18 verse 8, and three classes of persons shall bewail her downfall, kings, merchants and seamen. These are but a few specimens of the use of the number three in the scriptures. The number three is also prominent in nature. The primary colors of solar light are blue, yellow and red, and the sun itself is a trinity whose manifestations are light, heat and chemical rays. In nature there are three kingdoms, animal, vegetable and mineral. Matter exists in three forms, gaseous, liquid and solid, and the great forces of nature are gravitation, light and electricity. The history of the earth between the fall of man and the renovation of the earth by fire is divided into three ages, the antediluvian, present, and the millennial age, all bounded by great climatic changes. 4. The Number of the World the four seasons, winter, spring, summer and autumn. The four points of the compass, north, east, south and west. The four elements, earth, air, fire and water. The river that flowed out from the Garden of Eden was divided into four parts. Genesis 2 verses 10 to 14. Ezekiel had a vision of the cherubim. They were four in number and each had four faces and four wings. The first face was that of a man the second that of a lion, the third that of an ox, and the fourth that of an eagle, all of them earthly creatures. The great world powers as revealed to the prophet Daniel were four in number, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece and Rome. The four world judgments to come upon the nations are war, famine, pestilence and earthquakes. Matt, 24 6, 7. For divisions of the human race are nations, kindred, peoples and tongues. There are four portraits of Christ in the four Gospels. God's four sore judgments upon Jerusalem are the sword, famine, noisome beast, and the pestilence. The brazen altar had four sides and four horns, and the new Jerusalem is four square. 5. The Number of Division This number is not of frequent occurrence. There were five wise and five foolish virgins. Jesus fed the multitude, five thousand men, with five loaves. David took five smooth stones from the brook. There are five digits on each hand and foot. The books of Moses are five in number. There are five senses. 6. The Number of Man Man was made on the sixth day. His appointed days of labor are six. The Hebrew slave was to serve six years. For six years the land was to be sown and to rest during the seventh. The kingdoms of this world are to last for six thousand years, Moses was compelled to wait for six days on the mount before God revealed himself unto him. Exodus 24 verses 15 to 18. Six days the children of Israel compassed the city of Jericho before its walls fell on the seventh. Joshua 6 verses 1 to 20. There were six steps to Solomon's throne. 1 Kings 10 verse 19. It was six days after Jesus foretold of his coming glory before he took his disciples to the mount where he was transfigured before them. Matt 16 28 17 2. Nebuchadnezzar, a type of those who want to deify man, erected a golden image, typical of himself, in the plain of Dura, and commanded the rulers and people of his provinces to fall down before it and worship it under penalty of being thrown into a burning fiery furnace. Dan 3 colon 1-30 The dimensions of the image are worthy of note. It was 60 cubits high and 6 cubits broad. It was prophetic of the image of the beast that the false prophet will command the people to make in the day of the beast, Antichrist. Revelation 13 verses 13-18 And it is significant that the number of the beast is 666. This is the day when men are seeking the Deification of man and his powers, and dethroning the Son of Man, and they will reach the consummation of their desire when they, for commercial reasons, Revelation 13 verses 15 to 17, will worship the beast. This is man's day, and its symbol is six, which stops short of seven. 7. The number of perfection or dispensational fullness. It is made up of the sum of three plus four is equal to seven. That is of the divine number and the world number. It is more frequently used in the scriptures than any other numeral. It stands for the seventh day of the creative week and speaks of the millennial rest day. The Sabbath was the seventh day. 
Enoch was the seventh from Adam. There were seven days of grace after Noah entered into the ark and saw Jacob served seven years for Rachel. There were seven years of plenty and seven years of famine in Egypt. At the taking of Jericho, seven priests, with seven trumpets, marched at the head of the people seven times around the city. There was a seven-branched candlestick in the tabernacle. The land was to rest in the seventh year. Solomon was seven years in building the temple and kept the feast for seven days. Job had seven sons. When his friends came to visit him they sat seven days and seven nights in silence, and afterward they were required to offer a burnt offering of seven bullocks and seven rams. Naaman washed seven times in the Jordan. The blood was to be sprinkled seven times before the mercy seat. Leviticus 16 verse 14 There were seven feasts of Jehovah, some of which lasted seven days. The Savior spake seven words from the cross. Seven men of honest report were chosen to administer the alms of the church. But it is not until we come to the book of Revelation that we see the significance of the number seven. The book is addressed to the seven churches of Asia by him who stands in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, and from the seven spirits before his throne, and was to be sent to the seven stars, or ministers of those churches. There is a seven-sealed book, which is opened by a lamb having seven horns and seven eyes. Seven seals are broken. Seven angels sound seven trumpets and seven angels pour out seven golden vials containing the seven last plagues. There is a beast with seven heads, and a dragon with seven heads and seven crowns on the heads. There are seven mountains and in all the number seven is mentioned upward of fifty times in the book of Revelation. It is the book of sevens because it is the book of the consummation of all the seven dispensations of God's plan and purpose of the ages, and ushers in the new heaven and the new earth and the new city. 8. The Number of the New Order of Things The eighth day is the beginning of a new week. The Jewish Sabbath was on the last or seventh day of the week, Jesus rose on the first day of a new week or the eighth day. His resurrection introduced a new order of things, the Christian Sabbath and the new creation, or regeneration of the soul, and points to the new heaven and the new earth, which will be the eighth dispensation, following the seventh or millennial dispensation. God commanded Abraham to circumcise every male child on the eighth day. Genesis 17 verses 11 to 14. Any who were not circumcised were to be cut off from the people the Hebrew nation. Isaac was circumcised on the eighth day. What did circumcision symbolize? It symbolized that Abraham and his descendants were a new race, who by circumcision were cut off from the old Adamic headship, and entered into a new relationship with God. Noah was the eighth person, 2 Peter 2 verse 5, and his family consisted of eight persons, 1 Peter 3 verse 20, and they populated the new earth after the flood. David was the eighth son of Jesse, and he introduced a new order in Israel. 1 Samuel 16 verses 10 and 11. The leper was cleansed on the eighth day from his leprosy, thus proclaiming a new man. Leviticus 14 verses 10 and 23. The sheaf of first fruits was to be waved before the Lord on the eighth day, or the morrow after the Sabbath, Leviticus 23 verse 11, and fifty days later, on the same day of the week the Feast of Pentecost was observed, which typified the sending of the Holy Spirit, who inaugurated the new gospel dispensation. Leviticus 23 verse 16. The Feast of Tabernacles lasted for seven days, but on the eighth day a holy convocation was to be held. Leviticus 23 verse 36. The Feast of Tabernacles was the last of the three great festivals, and came at the close of the harvest, and during it the children of Israel dwelt in booths. It is typical of God's eternal rest. 10. The Number of Worldly Completion. It is made up of the sum of the world number 4 and 6 the number of man. It is probably based on the decimal system, suggested by the 10 digits of hands or feet. It was looked upon as a complete number, and was used as such in the Ten Commandments. In the parable of the Ten Virgins it gives the legal number necessary for a Jewish function. In the Ten Toes of Nebuchadnezzar's image, and the Ten Horns of Daniel's Fourth Beast, that point to the ten kings, or kingdoms, typified by the ten horns of John's beast, Revelation 17 verses 3 and 12, we see the summing up of Gentile power in ten federated kingdoms, which will be the completion of worldly Gentile rule, and which will be destroyed by the stone kingdom of Christ.
Then we have the ten pieces of silver, Luke 15 verse 8, and the ten servants to whom were entrusted ten pounds and one rewarded by being given authority over ten cities, Luke 19 verses 13 and 17. And the ten plagues of Egypt, and other uses of the number ten scattered through the scriptures. 12. The number of eternal perfection. It is the product of the divine number three, and for the world number, there were twelve tribes of Israel, twelve stones in the high priest's breastplate, twelve cakes of showbread, twelve wells of water at Elim, twelve spies were sent into Canaan, Joshua placed twelve stones in the bed of Jordan, Elijah built an altar of twelve stones, Solomon's molten seat stood on twelve brass oxen. In the New Testament we read that at twelve years of age Jesus visited the temple, that he chose twelve apostles and that his father would send, at his request, twelve legions of angels. Then there was the woman who was diseased for twelve years, and the twelve-year-old daughter of Jairus. In the book of Revelation we read of the woman with a crown of twelve stars, and that the new Jerusalem has twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, that it has twelve foundations, and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb, that its trees bear twelve manner of fruits, that it leath four square and measures twelve thousand furlongs on a side, and that the height of the wall is 144 cubits, or 12 by 12. We are also told that in the regeneration the twelve apostles shall sit on twelve thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Matt, 1928. Thus it is clear that in the final consummation of all things Israel and the church shall have their place in the new earth and the new city. 40. The Number of Probation At the flood it rained forty days and forty nights. Moses was on probation forty years in Egypt, forty years in the desert, and forty years with Israel in the wilderness. The spies were forty days spying out the land and Israel wandered forty years in the wilderness. The reigns of Saul, David and Solomon each lasted forty years. Goliath defied Israel for forty days. Nineveh was given forty days to repent. Elijah fasted forty days and forty nights. Jesus was tempted forty days and appeared eleven times during forty days after his resurrection. Punishment by flogging was limited to forty stripers save one. All these instances show that God was not hasty in his judgments, but gave man ample time for a fair trial. There are other numbers mentioned in scripture as seventy, one hundred and twenty, one hundred and forty-four, etc., but it is not necessary to pursue the subject further as we have seen that there is a symbolism attached to the numbers of Scripture.